Brother Digger Creel, and most of you out here know Brother Digger, and uh, and most of you probably know that Jeff and Brother Jeff and I we fill in sometimes over at uh, Hillcrest Baptist Church to uh, to lead in the worship over there. And uh, one thing that I have noticed about Brother Digger Creel is that whenever it's time to worship, you know he gets serious. Amen. He gets serious, and Brother Digger, he, now he can laugh with the best of us. Oh, Brother Digger, he can tell a joke, and he can laugh, and he can have fun. But you know what? When it's time to worship, y'all probably know what I'm talking about. Brother Digger says, okay, let's quiet our spirit. Let's just give, give honor and glory to Jesus Christ. And now let's truly worship the Lord. Amen? Amen. And so I appreciate Brother Digger. Let's pray for a moment. God in heaven, we come before you this morning, Lord, with a song in our heart. Lord, that we truly want to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, thank you for the ones that have come out in this, this nasty wet weather. And it started out kind of pretty, but you know, God, that you, your saints are here this morning. And we are here to worship you. We are gathered in your place, in your house, 
Lord, to lift up the name of Jesus Christ and Him only. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Honk your horn one time for me. Amen. Amen. Well, again, good morning. And I think the scripture that I want to read for you this morning is one that I think we actually read not too long ago. But I want to go back to this passage of scripture for a couple of good reasons. Uh, one thing is, tonight we're making a little shift. We are, we are doing... Uh, uh, Bible study and things on Sunday night in the fellowship hall over here. And so I want to encourage you, if you can come, if, you, if you're comfortable with coming in the building like that, we have everybody spread out and, and uh, maintaining that social distance and things. So if you want to come tonight at, at uh, 5 o'clock for Bible study, we would invite you to come there. But uh, one thing that we're doing tonight is we're going to be making a little shift in what we've been studying, and we're going to be moving into a study of the book of Philippians. And it's based on a book called The Power of Purpose by Michael Catt. It's actually some of the Sunday school material that we uh, we have right now. But I want to read a passage from Philippians chapter 2. And as I, I said earlier it's, uh, to some of you about it, you know, 15 years ago today, we were uh, beginning the recovery where we were at from Hurricane Katrina. And one of the things that I witnessed during that time was the church of God really being the hands and feet of Jesus. And so I want to read a, a passage from beginning in verse 1 of Philippians chapter 2 this morning. So this is a little bit of an introduction to, uh, to what we're going to be looking at over the next several weeks on Sunday night. And so I'd encourage you to come and be a part of that. But Paul writes in Philippians 2, If then there is any encouragement in Christ, if any consolation of love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, make my joy complete by thinking the same way, having the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility consider others as more important than yourselves. Everyone should look not for his own interest, but rather to the interest of others. Adopt the same attitude as that of Christ Jesus, who, existing in the form of God, did not consider equality with God as something to be exploited. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a servant, taking on the likeness of humanity. And when he had come as a man, he humbled himself by being obedient to the point of death, even the death on a cross." For this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my dear friends, just as you have always obeyed, so now, not only in my presence, but even more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is working in you both to will and to work according to his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling and arguing so that you may be blameless and pure children of God who are faultless in a crooked and perverted generation among whom you shine like stars in the world by holding firm to the word of life. Then I can boast in the day of Christ that I didn't run or labor for nothing. But even if I am poured out as a drink offering on the sacrificial service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. In the same way, you should also be glad and rejoice with me. May God bless the reading of his word. Kevin, come lead us in another song. Amen. Amen. I'll let you come back first. <laughs> Yeah, just like I said all ago in the prayer that, you know, this morning, Brother Jeff and I were over here getting ready, and there was there was still a little bit of sunlight. <laughs> and if you look out there tonight until this morning, you wouldn't you wouldn't guess that. But the next song we're going to be singing is Heavenly Sunlight. It's in your bulletin. Uh, sing with me, Heavenly Sunlight, an oldie but a goodie. Heavenly Sunlight. Sunlight all of my journey over the mountain through the 
this world of sorrow. I'll leave it all behind. Leave it all behind. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Amen.